made a quick, I should probably look at the recording, but uh, recording to really help you along with mission one and mission two um, from the Evolution Lab. So uh, I'm just going to get the Evolution Lab open here. So I put some more instructions, but I may tweak these a little bit by the time I am um, post this. But uh, get to the Evolution Lab, and you're familiar with this. We did this, or you did this for homework, and you just got familiar with really what evolution is about, some history of it. And I asked you to make detailed notes on that because you're going to refer to that quite a bit. But for today, we're looking at Mission 1 and Mission 2. So I just want to go through a few things about Mission 1 and Mission 2 to help you along. This is interactive. So you are um, you're going to have to, it's like a, a puzzle, problems that you're given that you need to figure out. You can't drag and drop in this uh, situation, which is great because it really, really pushes you to understand these phylogenic trees. So I want you to watch the video first. I'm going to turn that uh, volume off. I don't know whether you can hear that or not, but they're going to go through and teach, uh, instruct you on evolutionary tree, phylogenetic tree basics. When they talk about training trees, they're not talking about, you know, plant trees. They're talking about the, the, the tree that you build, showing the evolutionary um, connections or genetic connections of all organisms on the planet. All organisms can be paid, uh, placed into these uh, phylogenetic trees. So they go through and explain some things. I'm not going to watch, go through that with you, but they do describe to you what you're doing. So if you get stuck, you can return to this if you need some help. So within, this is mission one, there are, in this case, there are three interactive activities. So you're going to do all three and you're going to do details in all three. So if I click on the first one, obviously it's our first one, so it's fairly straightforward, but it's talking about uh, geckos and palm trees, and I think there's going to be um, a mushroom that we're gonna, that's going to be included in here. The most important thing is to, to not jump in and start dragging these organisms to build your tree. What's really important is you click on the magnifying glass and you actually go and read about the organism. So, and you're going to record data here. So this is a gold dust day gecko and it shows what it looks like, kind of a cool looking organism. Here's the things I want you to um, record. Has cells with the nuclei and is heterotrophic. Now, you may need to refresh your memory about what a heterotroph is. You can write that information. I didn't record that information, but you can record that if you if you need to. But obviously the assumption is that you know what a heterotroph is. You do not, you do not need to record this information here, but it's pretty cool to read it. We're looking at this data, this information, you know, that scientists have done and researched about this gecko. This is the information we want. So I want you to organize this information in a table. So you've got your gold dust day gecko, and then you have these two traits or characteristics of the gecko. Then you have the palm tree, and you can see it's got something similar, well, kind of similar. <laughs> it has, has cells with nuclei, so there you're seeing two similarities. But it is a photosynthetic, photosynthetic autotroph or photosynthesizing autotroph. Um, and then it describes some things about the trees. But again, I'm not, you do not need to, like, I'm not going to ask you questions or typically people are somewhat familiar with palm trees. This is not the details that I'm after. These are the details that I'm after because these help build the tree. And then on the last one, what's really cool is that they actually do comparison of looking at the cells. You do not need to record this. But they are showing evidence to say, hey, we've looked at the nuclei and we find them all to be similar. Now, you see there's actually another organ. Here's the third. This is the third one. This will make sense when we go back to building the tree. Uh, this is a mushroom. Again, here's the two pieces of data that we're dealing with. So you've recorded that information in a table. 
So uh, on your notes, what I have is my table with columns. Um, they're broken up to palm tree, fly mushroom, and gecko. I just short formed the words, but you do want to have the complete words written somewhere. And then I wrote that the you know all three have nuclei, two are heterotrophic, and one is um, photosynthetic, photosynthesizing. So how you set up your table is your choice, but you must have that data recorded. So now we get to build it. So I drag my gecko up and I bring my palm tree up and you can see it starts to make a connection here. And from looking now back at your table, you'll know that the gecko and the palm tree both have cells with nuclei. So that's where I put them, that they both, and you can see how they, the blue dots, you know, move up through the tree and they go, yep, they both have cells with nuclei. And then you'll see over here on the right, good job, thank you. And then they add the mushroom. So if you go back to your notes, your table now, and you go, oh, it has the cells with nuclei and it's heterotrophic though. So where do we have the division? Which ones are heterotrophic and which one are photosynthetic, photosynthesizing? The um, uh, mushroom is, oh, they're saying click on the magnifying glass. They want, sometimes they're going to control. <laughs> they're going to say, you need to go back and you need to look at this. And now it's allowing you to move. So I know because the uh, mushroom is heterotrophic, it is closer in relation to the gecko than it is to the palm tree, which you might find, hmm, that's kind of interesting. So then I've got these dots and I can put my heterotrophic here. And it said earlier that the palm tree was photosynthesizing. And watch these little dots up here. And on the right, when you got it right, when you have it correct, this little box will show come up and then it's going to ask you a question. You don't need to answer this question. This is just saying, hey, let's think about this. And well, sorry, you have to answer this question. <laughs> you don't have to record the answer to the question. You do, however, have to draw this tree. So you've got your table of your characteristics with, you know, has nuclei. It's either photosynthetic, uh, a photosynthesizing autotroph or heterotrophic. And then you're going to draw this tree. Yes, you're going to draw this tree. It is going to take you some time. I, I know that, but this tree is going to be really important because remember, well, maybe you don't know. At the end, you're going to be building one that has, I think, seven organisms in it. Right now, we're only dealing with three. So then I ask you a question. Uh, can be the first, uh, is a fungus more, um, here's the question, is an animal or a plant more closely related to a fungus? So is the fungus more animal-like, which is a gecko, or is it more plant-like? And you can see from the division in the, the tree that it is more animal-like. And then it says, good job. And then I move on to the next one. So the next one is familiar faces. So um, for this one, we're looking at some different information. So recall the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open up. You're going to click on that um, button here, the research button. And it's going to give you some information. And there you can see now you're getting more information. And you've got to create table number two that is dealing with this interactive. And you need to record this and you'll see at the end when we get, I think it's the four organisms you're looking at. Yeah, you're looking at a dog, a goldfish, king snake, and a stick insect. And as you scroll through, you're gonna see, you know, as a vertebrate, you, you gotta record this into your, you gotta make a table number two. And you don't need to write about the goldfish I just want this details in this part here. And you're going to go through and through. And then always on the very last bit, they have a discussion about, well, it talks about these organisms up here saying is an amniote. And you may go, what the heck? I, I don't know what that is. So they actually go to the areas that you may not be familiar with, and they explain what, what an amniote is. Okay talks about the egg and then you go it can cycle back through you know there's our dogs again I love that picture so then you close it with the X here and you're back to your tree and now you're going to build the tree from 
the information or your table. This is the table becomes so important and you should be really good at making tables now. So this is interactive number two, familiar faces, and it's the traits of the dog, goldfish, kingfish, king snake, and stick animal. I'm not going to build this for you, okay? But I do know when I go like, this is not correct. I'm telling you right now it's not correct. But I do know that they all had bilateral symmetry. So that is the characteristic that goes right to the bottom. They all had bilateral symmetry. Now, what's the next thing that are similar? Well, they talk about vertebrates. We got three that are our vertebrates. So I know that those three are the king, snake, goldfish, and dog. How do I know that? Because I have my table from this search button here, right? From this search button, I know that, whoops, sorry about that. It's a, ver it's a vertebrate, right? So I can then put that in there. It's, it's um, a vertebrate. Um, I know that the dog and kingfish, look at me. I have to move these around. Goldfish is going to get separated out. You get you have to get to play around with it. This is to figure out how to get it set up. Um, we now have the king snake and dog actually connected together. They branch off or more closely related related is what that is meaning. And I actually did that wrong. It's dog and yeah, no, I did not. It's dog and king snake that are amniotes. King snake and dog are amniotes. Again, I'm re totally referring to my uh, table for this. And then I get this little box when I know I have the connections done right. Okay. The animals in this puzzle look very different, but they all have one thing in common. What trait is that? Well, they all have bilateral symmetry. So it's really just testing you and, and pushing you through learning about um, these evolutionary trees. Now this one's, now you're dealing with five traits and you're looking at um, five different organisms. Okay. And again, same idea, you're going to create a table and you're going to go through all, we're looking at banana, lemon, onion, radish, and seaweed. And we're just saying, how are these related? How are these related? Now, right now we're dealing with physical characteristics that we see. Tomorrow we're going to be working on DNA, genetic similarities that, that we see. So um, this one takes a little bit more time. Um, because you're dealing with um, five organisms. Um, I do know that the one connection between them all is they are all, right, this is not correct up here, but I do know that they are all photosynthetic autotrophs. Okay? I know they all fit into that because I have my table. But again, this is not correct. I'm not going to give you the kind of the answer. The idea is now that you go through it and you work through um, these these trees. Now, I may not be able to get to. Oh, yes, I can. So I can click home and then I'm going to go to mission two. And you're going to also do mission two today. And I'm only got you doing the two missions because I want you to spend like your good solid two hours working on this. So again, you're gonna, sorry, you're gonna watch the video, right? And this actually is about fossils, which we're like, hey, we've talked a lot about fossils already. Very quick, these are like two minute videos that introduce you. And then you get into the, again, in this one, there's three interactives. So you're going to do the same thing, but we're looking now comparing fossil records so organisms that are not living anymore to ones that are living now so it's kind of cool how we can still build this evolutionary tree by looking at our fossil records which fossils give a lot of physical characteristics and therefore allow uh, us to build a tree so same thing you're going to do your your um magnifying glass to learn about the organisms you're going to create a table uh, and you're going to record this information. Now, just to let you know, if you scroll through quickly, you'll see some 
have three traits, so that can give you an idea of how to set your table up. You'd want to have three rows for those, um, just to kind of help you out a little bit with that. That's what I did, and then I went back and I recorded what the characteristics were for this dinosaur, Albertosaurus. Okay, and then I recorded it for this one. Had feathers along its body, had a wishbone as part of its skeletal structure, and then we have chickens, has a beak without teeth, has features along feathers along its body, has a wishbone as part of its skeleton, etc. etc. So then we're gonna come and we're gonna build this tree. Now the one thing on this one I'll tell you that sometimes you'll see terms come up here on the left that you actually didn't record in your um, in your tables. And this is the one that's got shafted feathers. So which ones have feathers? We know that we're going to have the um, ostrich, chicken, and the dinosaur. Uh, that's, so I'm going to bring this ostrich over here. And I know that these three, ostrich, chicken, and the dinosaur, I'm not very good at saying that name, have shafted feathers. And that was something that wasn't written, but I kind of helping you out there that you'll sometimes find that, wait a minute, shafted feathers. Well, we know all three of those have feathers and you get a trust that they're saying those are uh, shafted feathers. Okay, so you're going to go through, um, whoops, sorry, I kind of jumped ahead there. You're going to do eating dinosaurs for dinner, that interactive, table, build the phylogenetic tree, copy the phylogenetic tree into your notes. One small step. I'm just checking here to see if there's anything that um, this one's fairly straightforward. Uh, we see uh, Tiktaalik show up here again. You've studied Tiktaalik before. Uh, and then um, this one I want to talk about on this origin of whales. There is this one in here called gills, and this one. I couldn't get it to work. Um, maybe you're going to get it to work, but uh, don't worry about that one if you get to that. And the same idea, you're going to research each of these uh, organisms. We've got um, organisms that are not living. We just have fossil records of them. We have characteristics, which is very cool. Like You'd have to go and research how scientists determined that it, it nursed underwater, and they are able to. They'd be very conclusive <laughs> that they recognize that this dinosaur nursed underwater was carnivorous and lived in seawater okay so you're building that table oh here we got one this uh, the blue whale has one two three four five points so you maybe want to have five columns in your table and then we got another dinosaur um we got the hippopotamus that one's nice and easy and we got the killer whale okay and another dinosaur and then they show one at the end here with saying, hey, you know, observe the carnivores versus the, uh, you know, plant eaters. So then you're taking these organisms and you're, and you're building the evolutionary tree. I'm just quickly th throwing them up here. This one takes a little bit more work because you've got five organisms and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six traits, although the gills one you really only have five traits. And uh, I'll tell you right now, the hippo is kind of out on its own. <laughs> and the rest are connected. Okay, so you're going to get this split that happens. You got a hippo over here, or you may do it on the right side. It doesn't matter which side it's on. And then you've got these guys that you're going to figure out how they are, com how they are connected through our, our evolutionary tree. And then when you get that box on the right, you know you're on the right track and you answer the question and then that's the end for today okay i'm going to stop there because I've, I've spoken a lot you can email me if you have questions and uh i hope you enjoy it it's really 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 good interactive activity really pushes you to understand those phylogenic trees enjoy <laughs>